Hey everyone, this is Ryan Lindsay at GoFab CNC, and this video is going to be a walkthrough of the new GoFab CNC accelerated software. Now this is the first screen you're going to see and we haven't opened a file yet. So the first thing we're going to do is tap on the screen like this message says so we can open up the file manager. The file I'm going to do is this mounting bracket file right here. So I'll just select it and you can see it opens it up right in the middle of the, the screen. And the most important thing to pay attention to whenever you're looking at files is where these orange crosshairs are. Where these orange crosshairs intersect is 0, zero and that's also called program start. And it can be anywhere on the table that we want to set it. There is no official starting place. We move the torch to a position and we set those, per those orange crosshairs right there. But first, let's focus on these file buttons that are at the bottom. This first one is to open a new file. Now that's going to close any files you currently have open and open a brand new file. And the second one is to add files. So let's say you want to cut out more than one file at a time. Use this button and you can open as many files as you want to cut at once. And then finally, this last button is the save button. And that's going to save whatever layout you currently have. So if you want to come back to it later, you can. Over here on the right, these are the action buttons. And every action button will change what's over here in the action panel. And it'll give you more options related to that action. So let's start with the first one. This first one is overview. An overview lets you zoom and pan and see everything that you're working on. And it also gives you some general information about the parts that you're cutting, how, how long it's going to take, how many pierces there are. And up at the top, there's a button called table visible. If you press that button, it's going to show you where you have your zero zero start and where you're going to cut out your part on the table. And you can see we've got zero zero all the way up here at the right, which means there's no more space for it to cut out that part. So we're going to have to move that zero zero away from that top right corner so we have enough space to cut out that part. But I'll show you how to do that later. Now the last thing that you can do inside of this panel is switch between millimeters and inches. So depending on which one you want to prefer, if you turn this off or turn it on, it'll change all of the values you see throughout the app to either millimeters or inches. I usually leave it on millimeters. All right, the next thing is parts. And underneath parts, this is where we can modify parts, select parts, delete parts, whatever we want to do. So the first button at the top left that also looks like the same as the button to, to open this panel is to select a part. So if we had multiple parts open, we would press this button, double tap on the part, and that would select it. And now this middle button is the duplicate button. So any part that we have that we've selected, we press this and it'll duplicate that part exactly like it is. If you hold down and press that duplicate button, it'll open up this window and you can select if you want to duplicate vertically, horizontally, and what you want your spacing to be. So we'll change it to vertically in five millimeters. And now when I press it, you'll see that it's gonna stack them on top of each other and they're gonna be a lot closer. This last button on the right is to remove a part, whatever one you have selected. So we remove the top one, then I'll select the bottom one and delete it. And now all we've got left is the one that's in the middle. And now done underneath the modify panel, this is the move button. And when you press it, you can move a part with your fingers or if you want, you can tap inside of these boxes and it'll open up this window and you can type in a specific value and move it to wherever you want. The next one is the resizing button, works just like the move button. You can resize it with your fingers or you can type inside of these boxes and get a very specific size. And the last one is the rotate button. Also works the same exact way. You can either use your fingers to rotate it or you can tap on this box and put in a very specific value. Now real quick, we're gonna jump down to this undo button right here, which has shown up since we've been doing things. And if you press it, you can just step back through the things that you've done. You can also step forward on them. Now this last button right here, this is an advanced feature. This is the feature that lets our software find all the different parts in a file. So if you made a file that has 10 different parts, it'll find all 10 of those parts and separate them so you can modify them independently. But some people don't want that. They want the file to be treated as one giant part so you can turn that feature off. Now under this panel is the cut panel and this is also advanced. This deals with the pierce points and the offsets. In plasma, you don't want to pierce right on the path that you're cutting because piercing is kind of messy. So instead you want to pierce away from that path and then curve into that path so that you can't tell where the pierce was. And our software will do that automatically. If you see inside of these circles right here, these little hooks, those are generated by our software automatically so that it pierces away and then curves in. 
Some people like to design pierce points in their files already, and if you do, you have the option of turning that off, and now you can see that those little hooks disappeared. And same thing for the offsets, or where it's piercing away or compensating for the tip size. You don't want to cut right on the path because that flame is kind of fat, and if you were trying to cut out a two inch square, it may end up coming out a little bit less than two inches. So it moves the torch out a little bit to compensate. But again, some people do that in the software or in the file in the design and don't want it to do be done by our software and they can turn it off. And the last option is to reverse whether this is an inside part or an outside part. Uh, you can think of it like if you were cutting out a word, do you want to keep the letters or do you want to keep the metal that's around the letters? And down here at the bottom, this gives you the option to really detailed edit the pierce points and the, the inside outside. If you press this first one, this is for modifying where pierce points are. So if I turn it on, I can touch where a cut is and you can see it moves that pierce point to wherever I touch. And the same thing for the inside outside. If I press that button and touch a cut, you'll see that it switches from inside to outside. And now that one uh, is back. And this last one is to turn off all of them completely, both of them. So if you press this, it'll take off those uh, compensation, and it'll take off those pierce points. Now we're going to jump down to the material select, and this is where you spend a lot of time picking the material you're going to cut, and it's really straightforward. You select your metal, then you select your thickness, and then you're going to select the tip size that you're going to use. And you'll get some general information for what you need to set the plasma cutter at. And you can choose either quality or speed. Quality is going to go slower, speed is going to go faster, but not be quite as high resolution. And this is also an advanced feature that you don't really have to mess with, but if you want to, it'll bring you into the, the settings that we use for every material. And this is different for every single material. And I know it looks complicated at first, but it breaks down pretty easy. So up at the top right over here, we have the cut width. And that's telling us how fat that flame is so that the software knows how much to offset and how much to move the pierce points away in order to get it exactly like we want. Um, and if you change that, you're going to see it change on your files. Over here on the left, this is how we handle pierce points. So uh, this whole section right here just handles the piercing process. And there's four basic steps. It's going to first go down and find the metal. It's going to back off to the ignite height. And that ignite height, you want it to be high enough that when it fires, it doesn't blast a lot of stuff onto the tip. Uh, and then it's going to go down to, to close to the metal, which is the plunge height, which is making sure that it's got a good connection. And then it's going to rise up a little bit to what the cut height is. And that cut height is where it's going to be throughout the entire time that it's cutting that part out. And then the final thing that we have is the pierce delay. And the pierce delay is how long it's going to stay in place to pierce through. So on thinner metals, it's going to pierce through really quickly. We're going to have a short period of time. And on thicker metals, it's going to be a lot longer. And this is in milliseconds. And 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. So you can see on this 25 gauge, we've got it for 50 milliseconds, which is hardly any time at all it's going to blast through. And then the main thing over here that has to do with quality and speed is the feed rate. And the feed rate is how fast is it going to move that torch around the table in order to cut out that metal. And again, if it's thinner metal, it can go a lot faster. And if it's thicker metal, it's going to go a lot slower. So right now we have it set at 3000 millimeters per minute. And you can see that we're on the quality setting. If we switch to the speed setting, it'll give us a different value inside of there because we're going faster. And if we ever want to do a test cut to see what's ideal, we have two different test cut features. This one is for feed rate. It's going to do a part that has seven different lines. It'll do them all at slightly different speeds, and you just pick the line that you like the best, and it'll adjust. And this one is for the cut height. It does the same thing, seven different lines. At the end when it's done, you just pick the line that you like the best, and, and it'll save that setting. And if you ever get too uh, confused with what your settings are and you want to go back, just press this button right here and it'll show you all the default values that it originally had. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and connect to the table by pressing this button right here. As soon as you press it, you'll see it start trying to connect. And as soon as it does, it's going to show you this screen which says it needs to home. Just say yes. When you do, you're going to see the torch go to the back right of the table. And you'll also notice that where we had the connect button, it's changed to these two new buttons right here. That's the controller button and the send button. 
So the first button that we're going to look at is this controller button. That's what lets us move the torch wherever we want to. So we'll open up the controller screen. And this looks kind of complicated too, but it's really pretty easy and breaks down pretty simple. Over here we have our controller to move the torch in small movements. You can move it to the back, to the front, to the left, and to the right. And if you press this gray button in the center right here, it controls how much it moves whenever you press one of those buttons. And then these black buttons with the white arrows that are up here that you see there that are going around the image, those are the fast travel buttons that will move the torch to wherever that arrow is pointing as fast as it can until it can't move anymore. And then over here on the right, this is to raise and lower the z-axis. Now you never have to raise and lower the z-axis. The software is going to take care of all of that on its own. But sometimes if you mark a spot on the metal and the torch is up at the top, it's hard to see if you've lined it up right and you can lower that torch so you can see that you're right on top of it. And then over here, the red button, this is the button where we set the zero zero. So wherever we move the torch, we press this button and you'll see those orange crosshairs snap over to wherever that torch is on the table. And that's how we know where we're going to cut out our part. This middle button right here is the plasma button. This was a request by some owners to be able to fire the plasma while they're in this screen because when they got done cutting up a sheet, they wanted to be able to chop that sheet up. And so they could turn the plasma on in this screen and then use the controller to move it around in order to chop that stuff up. All right, so we're going to zoom out so we can see where we are. You can see that the part, the zero, 00, where those orange crosshairs are, are down at the very bottom left of the table. I'd already moved them down here. And the torch is over at the top right of the table. So if we were to start this file right now, that torch is going to come all the way down to the bottom in order to cut that part out. But I'm going to show you how you can move that zero, 00 to a different position. So I'm going to press this button at the bottom left to make it come down to the bottom left corner. And then I'll stop it right about here. And now I'm going to press that red set program start button and you're going to see those orange crosshairs snap over to where that torch is. All right, there you can see it. And we'll zoom in also so you can see exactly what it looks like. You can see the tip of the torch is a blue circle and you can see that it's centered right on top of those orange crosshairs. And again, that's how you can pick anywhere you want. If we had placed a scrap piece of metal down right here, we could cut it out of that by placing zero, 00 right there. And if you move the torch away, just press this go to start button and it'll snap it back to where that is. You don't have to. Once you mark zero, 00, you can move the torch wherever you want. When you hit play, it's going to go back to that last location that you set at zero, 00. So now we'll close out of this. All right, and another button that's appeared since we connected to the table is this plasma button right here. And you can see that it's green, which means that it's going to fire the plasma whenever it goes to cut this out. But we'll go ahead and tap on this so that we can go into the tool select panel. And you can see that we have an option to fire the plasma or we can turn this off if we want to do a dry run. So if we press that button, it's going to gray everything out. And that means it's not going to fire the plasma this time. It's just going to run through it but we'll have it fire the plasma. The next option down is to monitor the flame status and that makes sure that it has a good connection before it takes off and starts tracing out the pattern that you wanna cut in case there's a misfire. And this is the automatic torch height controller. This is where it's gonna follow a curved or bent piece of metal. You might turn this off if you're doing something like expanded steel where it's got a bunch of holes and you don't want it to dive. And and then find surface and find surface is where it's going to go down and find the surface. You're probably going to leave that on all the time, but if you ever switch out your torch with an oxyacetylene, you may not want to do it. It may be manually where you raise it and lower it. And this last option is a safe travel height. So whenever it finishes a cut and moves to the next cut, does it go all the way up to home or do you want to set it at a lower height so that it doesn't take as long and it will make your cuts go faster. Now this button right here is the send button. Once we have everything like we want, we press the send button. It'll send everything over to the table. And now you'll notice that send button has changed to a play button. So we're ready to cut this file out. So we'll hit play. And that's going to open up the confirmation screen. And that's going to show us that the plasma is going to fire. It's green. It's telling us what settings we need to have the plasma set to. And then we're going to hit play. And then that's it. It's going to take off and cut this part. That's the screen that you're going to see whenever it's cutting. That circle is going to be a progress bar that's going to show you how far you've gone. There's a follow cut button that will actually follow where the torch is going. You can pause it. If you do, it's going to raise the torch up so that you can change out a tip if you need to. 
and there's a stop button and if you hit the stop button that's going to cancel it completely <clears throat> now one feature that i didn't talk about before but we will now is this other button that's the start anywhere button sometimes you're not going to want to start a file at the very beginning you're going to want to start somewhere in the middle either there was something that screwed up or for whatever reason so when you open the step through button you have where you can skip part to part you can skip a section inside of a part so you'll see I'll skip this section and you'll see it darken the ones that it's skipping so we're moving over and then the last section is segment and segment once you're inside of a, a section you can skip exactly where you want in that section to start and when you get it where you want to you just press this button this button at the very bottom that says start cutting at this segment it'll turn green and now whenever you hit play that's where it's going to start cutting and this is also the window that pops up whenever you hit pause. So if you have to pause and say the tip blew out and you have to back up, you'll be able to back up from the pause screen to wherever you need to to start from right there. And that's it. That is the new accelerated software run through. If you have any questions, obviously you can call us. Um, but thank you for watching.